All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to the All Things Croatia podcast. Uh, today, we have a very special guest, Katica Rakulic. She was the first runner-up of Miss, Cro- Miss Universe Croatia in 2011. She represented Croatia at the Top Model of the World competition, among other titles in her successful modeling career. She was also recently at the, and I forgot I wanted to ask you how to pronounce this, Khan F- Film Festival? Um, Can Film Festival. I used to say it incorrectly myself. Really? I used Can. to count it. I think, I'm pretty sure I just say canes. I mean, in the US, you know, yeah, we say canes, everything. I think. Can. I'll try to pronounce that. If there's any uh, of our French Croatian audience listening, hopefully they don't get upset at me. Uh, film festival. But you covered the that festival this year, 2023, as a TV presenter, as well as walking the red carpet as a model. Um, yeah, Katica, thanks for coming on the podcast. I'm excited to delve into this a little bit. Well, thank you so much for, for having me. I'm, I'm excited. Of course, yeah. Um, you know, if you could just sort of introduce yourself to you know our viewers who may not be familiar with you, tell us a little bit about you know where you were born and your growing up. Yeah, so I was actually born in Split in Croatia. Um, I lived there for three months and I came to Sweden, to Gothenburg uh, at the age of three months. And I uh, grew up in Sweden. Uh, I did a few beauty uh, pageants, big pageants. As you mentioned, you know, Miss Universe, top model of the world. Uh, I live in Gothenburg. I was also Miss Gothenburg. And I have been modeling for the past 10 years, living in a lot of cities around the world. Um, recently got into TV hosting, maybe two years ago, probably. Um, and I also have a degree in economy and public administration and have been working uh, six years for in the Swedish government, for the Swedish companies. Yeah. Wow. So you're, you're doing it all. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, you mentioned, of course, you were born in Split. Um, you know, you and your family moved to Sweden. Is there a big, there is a big Croatian community, I believe, in Sweden, right? Is there one near you in Gothenburg? Yeah, we have the Croatian club, uh, Velebit, here in Gothenburg, actually, in my city, uh, like 15 minutes from here, really. Uh, it's a Christian club. They have their own, like, football team as well. And I used to dance there when I was uh, much younger, the Croatian traditional dance. Um, so I used to hang out there a lot, not so much now, but it is a very big community of Christian people, uh, in Gothenburg, especially, I would say. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I read that you had either, I read or heard in another interview that you were dancing, you know, Kolo growing up at the yeah. church. I think it's, it's funny because we do that too in LA. Actually, I never did that. My dad, uh, my dad did it. And then I was, you know, the middle kid and they took my older sister to the church for language things. But by the time right. they had me, they were, uh, it's too far of a drive and everything. So I didn't do Kolo, but a lot of my friends over there in the Croatian community did Kolo. And when I first came to Croatia, I expected, I thought everyone danced Kolo here, you know, and <laughs> it turns out it's not, it's not like a modern, you know, popular, it's popular dance, I guess, for like, you know, young kids. Yeah, not at all. But I know they have competitions in it because I read about it. And also here they have competitions about like, you know, the best group because they dance, they dance in groups. So they do some tournament, I guess, or, um, I mean, I'm seeing, I'm reading about it online, but I don't know too much about it, but it's not so uh, modern, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to see what sort of traditions are kept alive in the diaspora and that are, you know, maybe kind of being modernized in in Croatia, or at least here in Zagreb, um, you know, which is probably the most, um, I don't want to say most modern city in Croatia, but, you know, the biggest and most influenced by, you know, sort of other places. Um, right. Yeah. But so do you ever, do you still remember all the steps and stuff? If you go to a Croatian wedding or something, oh. do you? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Uh, maybe, you know, one or two steps, but it was such a long time ago. Uh, and I did it for a very short period of time, really. Um, so yeah, not, not really, but I worn the costume a lot of times for contests and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but I can't remember the steps. So. Do <laughs> oh, you? Yeah. No, I know the basic, the like, do, 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 like the cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the it's cake. like the like, same, uh, three or four steps. Yeah. I don't know. I can do the three or four, any more than four. That's too much. 
<laughs> Too much. Yeah. But uh, Katica, tell us a little bit about, you know, modeling, um, you know, about Miss Universe Croatia, how you started modeling and then, um, you know, Miss Universe and how all that happened. Mm-hmm. Well, I have always been like an entertainer uh, since I was very little. I remember my first memory of something similar to this was I saw this old man sitting outside on a bench, like on his own. He was very old and I thought he looked sad. So I decided to go and dance for him and sing for him. Um, I was very like, maybe 10, nine years old and he got very happy. And so I remember always being like a entertainer. And in school, I always, always used to sing on, you know, graduations or Christmas uh, gatherings and things like that, like perform. Uh, but when I was about 16, my mom took me to a local agency, which I spoke about before, um, for a casting to become a model. And they chose me and this other girl. And from there, it kind of, you know, started. But I was too young. They wanted to send me to Paris. I was still in school. My parents said, you know, there's no way. So I had to wait and to pursue that career later on. Um, and for the Miss Universe contest, uh, I remember I was on the beach one summer in Croatia because first they have this, you know, uh, region contest. Like first I was in Miss Dalmatia. And then if you move on from there, you, you go to the, to the big final. So somebody approached me and was like, you know, you should go to this casting in uh, Hotel Madrid and Lab, which is now my favorite hotel. Um, so I went there with my sister and they chose me to be in, a, I believe it was the top 12 or 15, I'm not sure, um, to compete. And from there on, I went to uh, the big final, Universe Croatia. Um, and I also got my agent from there that recognize me from the contest he is in canada uh, does movies and has a own agency so he was like you should come model for me we want to be your mother agents and from there he sent me to mexico china u.s uh, all of all of the countries i've been really on uh, modeling contracts mm-hmm. um, so yeah i mean that's a long story short yeah, so uh, that sort of kicked off the Miss Universe. Sort of kicked off your modeling career. You, you could say that. Uh, I mean, I was still interested in modeling before, but didn't really go that far. Um, didn't pursue it like that. And after Miss Universe, I guess you know I got more confident, and I just kept kept going. Really, kept it rolling. Mm-hmm. Well, you mentioned uh, modeling in some other countries, Mexico, yeah. China. I want to mm-hmm. ask. How does the Great Wall of China compare to the walls of stone and Molly Stone? To, to the walls of stone in I didn't understand that. And Molly Stone over in uh, on Peljashats. Have you ever been to the walls there? The big. Um... Oh, I have not. I have not. Oh, really? You should go. It's. Oh, okay. Like you I'm know the that... new bridge that they built. Yeah. I so know. you don't have to go through, you know, Neum to right, uh, go right. to Dubrovnik. If you go on that bridge, there's. Two little cities, Stone and Molly Stone, and it's the second longest. I think the second longest walls in the in the world. The first longest oh. in Europe that they have See, there. I didn't know that actually. Okay, ah, I thought for then sure. I, right? <laughs> I definitely have to go. That yeah, you should check it out. You can walk along the walls, and you, it's a really beautiful view over there. Well, I'm actually sure it's better than the Great Wall of China. <laughs> because <laughs> I always, uh, you know, Croatia is like number one for me. I am. I don't know. Pe- some people maybe think it's too much. Like some people say, "Oh, you're like a nationalist," you know, a little bit. But I'm proud of it because I'm, I'm proud of my roots. Um, so yeah. But uh, the Great Wall of China, I've been there actually two times. One time to shoot for a job, and another time uh, with the media actually for for Top Model of the World. And um, I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. Um, but I mean, I would recommend anyone to go there if they want to see something. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm sure that's that's awesome that you've been able to travel. Um, where were you in Mexico when you were um, working a, a shoot there? Yeah. Uh, so I lived in Mexico City for six months. Mm. Um, lived and worked in Mexico City uh, on a model contract 
But I also traveled to places for work. I was in Cancun. I love Cancun because I love uh, tropical uh, places and the beach and the sun. So, of course, and Acapulco, uh, Gual- Gualjayara. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Guadalajara, yeah. Uh-huh. And so, and that was for uh, beer commercials. I did two different uh, commercials there for Coors Light. Um, so, yeah, I've been in a lot of small cities. I don't remember all of the names, but mainly in uh, Mexico City, which was my base. Uh, pretty cool. I've never been, always wanted to go. Um, sort of last questioning about modeling. Um, is, is there anything about modeling that maybe people don't realize? From the outside um, world? Yeah, I think that you, I mean, I guess it looks very glamorous and easy, uh, easy life, but it's definitely not. I would say if you don't have a strong mindset, uh, you should not get into modeling. You need to know who you are. You need to, you know, be true to your values, to your morals, and to your beliefs, because there's a dirty side of modeling for sure. And if somebody tells you it's not, they probably didn't really model, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, just that you have to have a uh, mental toughness. And even when it comes to, you know, the agency, you're going to get a lot of critique about your looks and people are going to think different things about you. And you must be able to take that and um, just have a very strong confidence, I would say. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So do people recognize you when you're... All right, well, actually, let me ask first. How often do you go back to Croatia? A lot. Um, I mean, every year, for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I was just in Croatia. I'm just going back now in 10 days for my cousin's wedding uh, and finishing some projects I'm, I'm doing there. Um, so I try to go at least two times a year. I mean, it's not so far. It's about two hours by uh, plane, really. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, with I, with I'd Ryanair like Air, Airlines, it's it can be super cheap to fly here in, in Europe. That's one thing that I, yeah. I really don't miss from the U.S. Because a two hour flight in the U.S. can cost you know two hundred fifty three hundred dollars, and here Ryanair, right. I'll get you know a twenty euro flight for two hour the, flight to yeah. you know Belgium or somewhere. It's the same with my uh, aunt in uh, Australia. It's super far for them and. Uh, apparently, you know, very expensive as well. Uh, if you're going to travel a lot, because it's, well, it's, it's super far. So, yeah. Um, so I yeah. guess I'm lucky it's, it's close. Yeah, definitely. I didn't realize it was only two hours from, from Gothenburg. Is that where you fly yeah, from? In or the is summer, there a... within, there's a direct flight. So it's like two hours and 40 minutes, I believe, uh, from Gothenburg to Split. So it's wow. That's perfect. Really. It's yeah. perfect to go down, especially in the summer and, you know, go relax yeah. on the beach and everything. I'm assuming you go in the summer, at least if you can, mm-hmm. when you do only once a year. Yeah, I mean, I usually come uh, sometimes in the summer or before the summer, let's say like May. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I love to come this time of year. I just came from there and, and I was there uh, all of uh, September because it's still, you know, summer and it's super hot. At least by the coast. I don't know about Zagreb. But, yeah. <laughs> it, it was still <laughs> hot here, I think, but less tourists down over by the coast this time of year, a little bit after the, the season ends. So that's nice. Yeah. that. Yeah. And not so much tourists, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so definitely. That. <laughs> uh, do you listen to any Croatian music? A lot of Croatian music. Yeah. Um, what, what kinds? What sort of bands or, or um, genres? I mean... Really everything, like pop, um, I mean, the clape, you know, uh, Severina, Jelena Rosga, uh, how can I say, Narodna, Narodna, Rosga. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know the English word for this, but I'm sure you understand. Folk yeah. music, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, pop music, um, like typical Dalmatian music. And also, when I mention this, people don't like it. I understand, but I also listen to Psyche sometimes. You know, mm-hmm. but you know, I mean, I listen to what makes me happy, and uh, you have to feel the music. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. When do you, in terms of like modeling or anything that you do, do you ever use music to either pump you up or calm you down or get you ready for something? I don't know. Definitely. Uh, if I sit in hair and makeup and they, I'm waiting to do a shoot, I usually, I usually listen to Christian music. Uh, sometimes I put it on loud if, if it's okay for 
for the for the people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you never know. Um, but definitely, and when I run, uh, for instance, I love to listen to you. You know, I really love uh, football, Croatian football. I am a big fan. So I listen to all these songs. Uh, if I go running, it really pumps me up. I love to run every morning. So, uh, yeah. So what, all the like Croatian football hype songs? Like Igor yes. Moya, Hrvatska, and all those? Yes, <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, those those two, yeah. actually, if I, you know, I'm working out or something, you know, those songs are great for, for pumping you up and, you know, getting you. Yeah, like, uh, you know, cheering song and it cheers you up, you know. You listen to them as well, or I do, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'll just, you know, be in my room and and listening to them, not doing anything special, but yeah, getting hyped up to cook dinner or something. But <laughs> exactly, <Yeah. laughs> just dance around, you know, you're cleaning or something. Exactly. Well, maybe not so much the dancing for me, but yeah, that type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I know you're a, a football fan, a Croatian football fan. You mess when I messaged you, uh, you mentioned you know you're upset that they lost. They lost the other day, yes. of course, to Wales and the. Mm-hmm. Before that, you know, to Turkey, a little disappointed, but a shocker, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Where were you watching? Uh, I was watching at home, uh, but if I'm in Croatia, I always go outside to watch um, because they don't really show the football game here in Sweden. Obviously, mm. you know, unless they're playing against Sweden, then they, they show it. But I cannot go outside and cheer for Croatia when Sweden are playing. I mean, I can, but. Not so popular. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, they have Rakitic. Is is he well liked over there in Sweden? Uh, I think it's. I'm not sure about it, but I mean, of course, it's more Luka Modric. Everybody knows him, I guess, internationally as well. Uh, so that's the name I hear the most here hmm. in Sweden. Even my friends from, uh, you know, different countries, they're like, "Yeah, we're watching Croatia." They're like Luka Modric fans. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's awesome. I don't know yeah. who else is really famous, uh, like internationally. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, well, yeah, but hopefully, I know Croatia. Mm-hmm. yeah, well, yeah. Of course, in Croatia, everyone. Were you able to be in Croatia at all for this World Cup, this most recent one, for any of those uh, games? I, you know, I I just came actually the same night as 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 the game, so I wanted to uh, be able to attend the game. But um, I was not, unfortunately. Mm. Um, yeah, that would have been awesome. Yeah, H- have you been, or do you go to the games? Or I've been. I went to one game, um, which was not during the World Cup, but it was a qualifiers against Russia at Poljud. Oh, right. When mm-hmm. it was raining super hard, and it was, I had to wear a trash bag because they didn't have oh. any, you know, ponchos or whatever. They were sold out, so we found some trash bags. Me and my friend and put them on to protect from the rain because we were at the only spot in Polyud that doesn't have the roof. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. it's like the cheapest tickets there in the stadium and it's the only uncovered part. So we were just getting soaked. Oh. But that was an awesome game. And then other than that, you know, I, of course I go to the Turk or, you know, wherever they show the game and, you know, I, I right, watch that out right. with people. And I guess the atmosphere is, you know, amazing. Uh, I mean, my first football game I ever saw, I was, my grandma took me when I was like 12. It was high to split playing. I remember that. So, uh, but I mean, I love the Croatia fans and, you know, the support. I, I think it's hard, as they say, it's hard to tell somebody else that's not from Croatia, uh, the energy, the love, you know, the feeling for, for the country and, and, and the game, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to explain to other people, but Croatians really yeah. have, you know, so much pride in in their country yeah. and their people. Definitely. Um, okay. Akatica, let's talk a little bit about the Can. Did I say that right? Film festival. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the Can Film Festival, right? Uh, so tell us a little bit. You know, what were you doing there uh, first of all, and you know, what was sort of your role there? Yeah. So. Uh, I was uh, hosting this, the festival, the whole film festival, all the days. I think it was um, seven or eight days, something like that. Uh, so every day I was covering with the team, uh, you know, who's going to walk the red carpet today and uh, what movie has the premiere today. Uh, we went to the press conferences, asked questions to uh, the movie stars. And um, so basically covering uh, every day because every day is something uh, happened. It was a new movie, a new premiere, and that was the main attraction of, of the day. So 
basically that. And, you know, went to premieres and got to walk the red carpet there. Um, so yeah, we were very busy. And then at the end of the day, we were also invited to all of these after parties. So, um, you know, uh, you are on it 24 seven, like you had to be there. And, uh, but I mean, it was great. It was work and it was fun. So, uh, it was really, a uh, amazing experience. I would say not, I, I didn't think the carpet would be so uh, little, to be honest, that surprised me the most. I <laughs> really? thought it would be much longer and bigger carpet. Yeah. yeah uh, it's just a it's small little. Mm -hmm. It looks very huge, actually. Huh. I, on TV <laughs> only. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. definitely. Wow, they, yeah, they yeah. got us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you meet any, um, you know, any celebrities that you were excited to meet there or anyone, you know, you were excited about talking, excited to talk mm -hmm. to over there? I mean, we asked some questions to uh, Johnny Depp. Um, I really like him. Uh, very down to earth, you know. And no filters, um, speaks what's on his mind. Um, uh, and we went to Harrison Ford's after party. He was there as well. And I got to talk to the producer of the, uh, Die Hard, uh, mm -hmm. producer, the movies. Um, uh, so yeah, there was a lot of producers that I got to know, uh, and still people, industry people. Because uh, the celebrities, you only meet them for a short while and you ask some questions and that's it. You know, unless they come to the after parties and you can mingle and, you know, but there's so much people and uh, it's very hectic. People just come and grab you, introduce themselves. They want to know who you are and it's just goes very fast. Oh, well, yeah, that's I mean, that's great networking, too, for you, because I saw that you actually did shoot a movie. Um, I don't know how long ago that was, yeah. but... Mm -hmm. Uh, it was about uh, four or five years ago in New York. Um, I shot it. It's called Earl Grifflin. It's going to come out. But I, I don't know if you what you know about it or you read something about that. But um, I decided to stop shooting the movie and ended the, the deal uh, because I could not agree with the uh, producer of the movie. He added some scenes that I did not agree on and so on. So I decided it's best to, you know, end that collaboration. Um, but that goes back to actually what we talked about before. You have to be very firm in, you know, who you are and what you want, what you don't want. Uh, set the boundaries. And, you know, if you don't feel comfortable with something, uh, simply don't do it. Um, but I also have an agent, as I said, that does movies. So my goal is to be in one of his future pro uh, projects. He's been mm. asking me about it, but I always, you know, I, we never got to it, but that's definitely something I'm looking more into. And I love acting as well. So yeah, that's maybe you, you're going to see me someday soon in, in some movie. I, I hope. I'm sure. Yeah. I believe it. That'd be awesome. Hopefully soon, yeah. sooner rather than later, but it sounds like exactly. at some point for sure, you're going to, you know, film another movie with, um, I mean, talking about networking at the, you know, festival, I was wondering, how do you prepare for, for the festival? Do you have to watch all the movies that are being presented there? Uh, yeah. I mean, actually it is uh, preferred if, if I do that, but to be honest, I did not watch one single movie uh, uh -huh. before I, I got there. And it was the same with the Swedish film festival where I was as well. I needed to watch the movies, but I did not. Uh, however, I wrote all my own scripts uh, for the movies. So I did some research. I looked up the movies, what, you know, what it was about, who produced them and some background info about every single movie, which was a lot. So I still knew, you know, uh, the basics of, uh, you know, the actors and the crew and the set and things like that. But I did not watch watch any movie really. <laughs> wow, I was wondering how many. If you did have to watch, if you did watch them all, how many is that? Like, I don't even know how many they have at the festival. Um, I believe that I wrote about. Maybe I'm wrong now, but I think it was around thirty or forty movies that I wow. did like a script for for Cannes Film Festival. Um, 
So it's not just go show up and ask some general questions. You really have to know what you're talking about. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to remember the names of people and, you know, when you're going to present them for the TV. And maybe you don't have to talk about all of the movies, but you still have to know them in, you know, because you never know uh, what we're going to talk about. So um, Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot of work still and to have to watch all the movies on top of that. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) that sounds like a lot of work. Definitely a cool opportunity, though. That's awesome that you were able to, you know, have that opportunity. Um, Kind of a fun question that I ask. I've been asking everyone lately who's come on the podcast. What's your favorite thing to eat when you're in Croatia? Uh, I am a seafood child. So I love seafood and clams is one of my favorite mm. dishes, actually. Mm-hmm. I love to eat that. Uh, I know it's either like you love it or you hate it, I guess, uh, like with sushi. But mm-hmm. uh, that's the specialty I, I really love. And of course, lo- lobster and, you know, uh, all, all kinds of seafood. Really? Huh. That's mm-hmm. interesting. You know, I hear, especially, you know, in Dalmatia, of course, they're, you mm-hmm. know, for seafood. I hear a lot about oysters, but clams, I feel like I don't hear about too often. I don't even know what's the oh. difference between a clam and an oyster. Uh, I believe, I believe the clams you are the black, you know, the small black ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and the oysters are there. I guess they're rounder, like the white rounder ones. I guess that's what you eat, right? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, do you eat them the same way? Is it like the same type of... Uh, well... How do you eat a clam? Oh, no. I'm sorry. You said oyster. That's the ones that... Are, sorry, that's completely wrong. That's the ones you eat raw, actually. Yes, with yes, like yes. With or something. Yeah. I, I try that too, but it doesn't taste anything. Just slimy, uh, uh-huh. I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, clams, you can cook them uh, with wine, uh, which is really yummy nothing like oyster at all so mm-hmm. i definitely recommend it or with you know polenta polenta mm-hmm. you can do that or with the uh, pasta uh, i mean sometimes i like to cook so <laughs> but uh yeah you should definitely try clams if, if you have not yeah um, I, ha- I will have to i've tried oysters yeah they they were a little slimy you taste the seawater a little bit not i'm not a huge su- seafood guy so that wasn't my thing but I'll have to try clams. Do you have like a favorite restaurant in, in Split or, or anywhere that you go for that? I mean, not for, not for seafood. No, I just, uh, you know, try uh, any place I heard or think or got recommended. Mm-hmm. And I compare them and see, if, you know, if, if it's good. Yeah. <laughs> but homemade is always the best, of course. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you cook or... I cook because I have to because I I live alone right now. So yeah, I'm forced to cook and I don't do anything fancy. Actually, right now on the stove, I'm keeping an eye on it. I've got some uh, meat sauce, you know, for pasta, mm-hmm. the ground beef and the tomato sauce and the onions. I've got that on the, on low right now. So nothing oh, fancy. Nice. <laughs> a lot of pasta because it's easy. <laughs> yeah. I like pasta a lot as well. So the and crazy for desserts. I mean, I love desserts. Yeah. Really? What kind of desserts? Uh, ice cream for sure. I love to try different ice creams wherever I go. I think Italy has one of the yummiest um, mm. ice creams. Yeah. The gelato, gelato over there. Yes. What, so you the, get a different flavor every time or you have a couple that you stick with that are your favorites? Um, well, I love the sea salt caramel flavor. Mm. Yeah. Really love that one. I don't like chocolate at all in, in ice cream. Um but yeah, I try to, I, I'm a person that loves to try new things or new food uh, or actually, you know, new everything like adventures or uh, exhibitions and stuff like that, you know. So um, yeah, a new ice cream flavor every time if I can find a new one. That's, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I know in Split, everywhere on, you know, the coast there of the Adriatic, there's every block, there's, you know, an ice cream stand to try in the summer at least Mm -hmm. but i I usually yeah yeah yeah. yeah. i usually stick with vanilla i'm pretty boring like that but i've i've been asking some people on the podcast and they've told me a couple of good recommendations someone said not too long ago um like pistachio 
and something else, ice cream. Oh yeah, yeah, pistachio. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's good as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because here in Sweden we have a uh, different chocolate, like you know, dime. I think it's Swedish, or we have Marabou, Swedish chocolate, and they put it in the ice cream. So I would recommend you that, but it's only here. So I try to find, you know, um, something that's unique for the country. There is a flavor they put into it or, or you know, something like that. Mm. But vanilla is nice as yeah, well. It's, <laughs> it's nice, I guess, when there's nothing else. Yeah. Uh, Katica, I read that you really like castles. Is that true? Yes, I love castle. Why? Yeah, I love history uh, in general, I would say. Um, so I have a favorite castle here in Sweden. I try to visit uh, those that are close. I didn't visit any in Croatia yet, but I, I had some in mind. I can't remember the name now, but it was like on the ocean, in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I just love to hear the history and, you know, about what happened there and uh, if there's kings who live there or, you know, uh, I like different timelines and also like period movies, you know, like old, older movies. Um, I really like that. Yeah. And of course, horror. I don't know if you read about that, but I'm a big I horror did, lover. And I didn't want to yeah. ask because I hate, I get so scared. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So I was like, I'm yeah, not going to no, bring this I, up. <laughs> I have a thing for horror movies. Um, it's like, I hate to be scared, but I still love to get scared. It's a crazy mm. thing. I've, um, yeah, I've heard that from from friends mm-hmm. that that's sort of the, you know, they don't like it, but they like like the feeling of or like once yeah, you are scared, like the then it's okay already. I, yeah, the excitement, I guess, the adrenaline mm-hmm. you get. Not me. That's I'll I'll do without the adrenaline and the excitement. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just for whatever reason, I never really got into horror, but that would actually be a cool, you know, genre of movie to to be in as well. I'm sure that's probably oh, fun to shoot. Yeah, definitely. Or mm-hmm. interesting, at least. I mean, my favorite movie is probably an uh, interview with the vampire. I don't know if you have seen um, this one with uh, um, Tom Cruise and uh, Brad Pitt. Huh. No, I don't know that one. You don't know it? Maybe? No. no. Uh, well, I can recommend it. It's uh, or confessions of a vampire. Yeah, uh, that sounds more familiar. Although I still yeah can't mm-hmm. picture it, but yeah, I'm sure I stay away from the whole genre, so I probably don't know most of those okay. movies that you <laughs> would say. But for people listening, um, I'm sure they're familiar with it. Or if they're not, maybe they want to check that one out. Um, got a few minutes left here. Okay, and I guess I'll save this question for last. But I'll ask you then. The second to last question, what's what other sort of future plans do you have or goals that you're setting for yourself? You know, I don't I always like to show my goals. I never like to see them. Uh, I'm, I've always been like that. But I could just say that, you know, um, just uh, reaching my full potential as always and being the best that I can be, improve in my work that I already do. Um, and I guess, you know, um, show you uh, what the future holds you'll have to wait and see awesome yeah looking forward to it yeah sometimes that's the best way to not you know give things away until yeah. they're they're actually done and, and you've completed them um but sort of last question here katitsa and i want to thank you again you know so much for your time here and for coming on the all things croatia podcast and do you have any you know social medias where can people find you you can find me on instagram at katitsa.prokulic I'm most active there. Awesome. This is something that I've asked everyone. What to you makes Croatia so special? I think it's the culture, the history, and, you know, the people. Uh, I would say the warmth of the people. When you come to Croatia, you feel like home. I mean, at at least I do. And they have their own ways, their own mentality, for sure. Um, And... Just, you know, the love for, for their country. Uh, you know, some people say it's, you know, their belief, like their religion and the love for uh, for just the country. I would say it, it's hard to explain. Yeah, definitely. You did a great job, though. That's an awesome answer. And I agree completely. Uh, Katica, thank you again so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much.